everybody, Hood of Cobra Commander 788 here, and uh, it's been a while since I've been able to do a midweek video because I've been so busy. Uh, but I thought I'd try one, kind of an unplanned uh, video here in the middle of the week. Uh, this video was requested by a longtime friend of the channel, Byron Kellogg. Byron sent me this G.I. Joe figure from 2000. This is later than the era of G.I. Joe that I normally collect, but uh, this is an interesting figure. This is Chameleon, and as you can see, see it is essentially a reissue of the 1984 Baroness figure with some new paint applications. Uh, I'm not going to do a complete comparison between these two figures, although you can see them here, you can, you can see how they compare, but Byron was asking if I could do a comparison of the accessories. They came with some very uh, similar accessories, uh, and so it might be helpful to take a look at them and see if we can tell them apart. But that's not all I want to do. I've been sent a a couple other figures by viewers and I wanted to get them in front of the camera as well so we will look at those too. Let's take a look at Chameleon's accessories. She came with a black version of Firefly's walkie-talkie. Not bad. Uh, she came with a black laser rifle and she came with a black backpack. Now let's look at the Baroness's accessories. She did not come with the walkie-talkie, but she did come with uh, the same black laser rifle and the same black backpack. Let's take a look at these laser rifles side by side, and it is kind of hard to tell them apart, but looking at them in person, there is a difference. I'm not sure if it's coming through on the camera, though. Uh, this is the Baroness's rifle, and this is the Chameleon rifle, uh, and the Baroness rifle is more of a true jet black. Uh, the rifle that came with Chameleon is more of a charcoal. If these were separate, it could be easy to get them mixed up, but side by side, in person, you can tell a difference. Now let's look at the backpacks, and these backpacks look like they are the same, both in molding and in color. I don't see a color difference uh, in person on these backpacks. Uh, they do actually look identical. The only difference I could find between the two uh, was in the shape of the the back peg. Uh, the back peg for the Chameleon backpack appears to be more rounded at the end than the Baroness backpack. Before we move on, here is the Baroness and Chameleon side by side. Uh, just for a quick look, uh, you can see the Chameleon uses the same mold as the Baroness, uh, just some additional paint applications, but not just the red. Uh, there also appears to be uh, a black paint application over the armored chest plate, and that gives it more of a glossy finish. Uh, it is subtle and not easy to see, but I guess that's a nice touch. I still prefer the Baroness action figure from 1984 because I like the subtlety of the all-black uniform, and I like the chest symbol better as well. Now I'd like to look at a couple carded figures, starting with this one. This is the Fun School release of Grunt version 3. So this is a G.I. Joe figure from India, and it's in a case here, and I'll leave it in the case. We can see it well enough from there. This figure was sent to me by a viewer named Christopher Biedenkopf, and I am very grateful. Thank you for sending this to me, Chris. Uh, I just love this thing. It is so wacky. First, take a look at this artwork. That artwork is very different from what we got in the United States, um, and the artwork doesn't look anything like the figure. Uh, that figure used the exact same mold from Grunt version 3, but look at the colors. They found a way to make the colors even crazier than the U.S. version, and I thought the U.S version's colors were pretty nutty. He still has that crazy flat top, and he has an orange jacket. The brown jacket on the American version, I have to say, is better. Uh, and then he has these aqua blue colored trousers. And, wow, I don't know which color is better, uh, the aqua blue or the banana yellow. My favorite part about this card is this kid. This is an advertisement for free G.I. Joe Tattoo Maker, and that's it right there. It's basically just a rubber ink stamp. Uh, and this kid is extremely happy, way too happy to have G.I. Joe stamps all over his face. Flipping it around to the back, it's not too crazy back here. We have a file card, and it's more or less the same as our U.S. file card. It even keeps his birthplace as Columbus, Ohio. We have the cross cell here, and uh, there you have it. Made in India by Fun School India Limited. Uh, the uh, packaging is entirely in English. There is no Hindi on it. Now for the grand finale, the 
Epic Unboxing. This is one that I will open. Uh, this figure was sent to me by Chris Pierce from the web series Comic Tropes. Uh, he found this in a shop for a dollar and got it on a lark and sent it to me. Uh, and I have to say, this is great. I both love and hate everything about this. As you can see, this is a knockoff figure of the Baroness. And with the paint applications, it actually looks more like chameleon uh, but there are some major differences and we will look at those but first let's look at the packaging it is called extreme troop counter terrorist units and there is no card art other than this I guess this is supposed to be a camouflage background uh, that is very busy and distracting it has a description here it says the extreme troop are chosen from among the world's ultra experts in the military arts and specialist to maintain peace against rogue nations. I don't think Winston Churchill could have said it better. Special forces against terrorism. And it looks like you get some kind of trading card here. We will take a look at that, but first let's flip this card around to the back and see what's back here. Here in the back we have a cross cell and these are all just ripped off G.I. Joe figures. These are all just knockoffs of G.I. Joe figures. So let's zoom in so we can see all the figures they are ripping off. Uh, and these guys don't even have code names. They just have countries. Like, uh, this is Snake Eyes, uh, obviously. Uh, and he just has country Spain, headquarters Madrid. Weapons, microbe bomb. Specializes, gorilla. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, here's our uh, Baroness knockoff right here. It says country France, headquarters Paris. Uh, weapons, double barreled pistol. Specializes, commands troop. Uh, he, she, he, uh, commands a single troop apparently. My favorite is this one which has his weapons as nuclear weapon. This was made in 2002 by Aglo Corp. So Hasbro if you're looking for who to sue about this there they are. I am going to rip this open. I've been looking forward to opening this figure ever since I got it but I wanted to wait uh, so that I could open it on camera so you guys could see it. Now there may be some hardcore extreme troop collectors out there that are just going to die when they see me open a carded video vintage extreme troop figure but frankly if you are out there trying to collect all the extreme troop figures there is something wrong with you make better decisions with your life so let's do it let's open extreme troop baroness and see what we get it actually is sealed pretty well on here let's uh, try to i i'm not trying to preserve the card at all i'm not trying to preserve any part of this let's just tear it open uh, on the card we have a plain uh, yellow background. We got some orange, uh, I guess that's supposed to be flames or explosions. It's not very well done. The whole card design is pretty poor. Uh, so here is the figure in the plastic. Let's pull the plastic off of the back. It looks like the figure is going to come with it. There we go. Now here's the figure in the tray. It looks like the accessories are taped in, so I'll have to pull the tape off of there. And this card thing is also taped in, and there's nothing on the back. Uh, it's not like a trading card at all. It's, I, guess, I guess this is just part of the packaging. Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't, it's not like a file card or anything. Oops, uh, it doesn't give you any information. It's just, it's just a really bad picture of the figure. Uh, with the Extreme Troop logo, so that is useless. Here it is, a real vintage knockoff Baroness figure, and I'm going to take a closer look at this, but I'd actually like to get the accessories out of the tray first. Okay, I got the accessories out, and she comes with another black Firefly walkie-talkie, very similar to the Chameleon walkie-talkie. She comes with a backpack, and this is very similar to the original Baroness backpack, but uh, it's easy to tell it apart from the original. Uh, what it is missing is the texture pattern. They couldn't quite capture that uh, on this knockoff. All oh, the sculpting is not nearly as good either. Uh, so easy to tell this apart from a vintage Baroness backpack. She doesn't stand very well. Here, stay right there. Finally she comes with a silver Uzi and this is a copy of the Uzi that came with the 1989 Snake Eyes. Uh, but you can tell the difference very easily. Uh, the one that uh, came with the knockoff Baroness is silver, and the Uzi for Snake Eyes was gray. All right, let's look at the figure, and here we have the head and uh, 
there may be some quality control issues here uh, compared with the original Baroness head. Uh, we have all the same elements. We have a somewhat human looking face. Uh, we have black hair and we have glasses and lipstick, uh, but man, the quality is so poor on this. I mean, the hair is not placed properly on the head. Uh, the lipstick paint application is off and the skin color is pale to the point of being translucent. The paint applications are obviously meant to copy the chameleon action figure, except really poorly done, both front and back, just a really half-assed job. The molding is really soft and loses a lot of the detail. This is a very poor representation of the Baroness. And you might notice here in the back, there are two screws instead of one. You might think that's odd for an O-ring figure, but this is not an O-ring figure. There is actually no articulation at all at the torso. That is glued together. I wanted to show you the articulation on this figure, and that's when I ran into something really funny. Uh, these arms have no elbow joints, uh, no swivel at the biceps. Uh, they are permanently molded into this pose. You can swing them at the shoulder, but that's all the movement you can get out of these arms. Also along those lines, no knee articulation. Those are straight legs. You can get some movement at the hip, but it's not easy. It feels like the figure will break. Also, no holes for foot pegs. All right, let's put accessories on this figure. Uh, the backpack, uh, you have a choice. Uh, you can put the backpack in the top screw hole like that, or uh, you can put it in the bottom screw hole, and of course that looks ridiculous, but the rest of the figure looks ridiculous too, so why not? I'm just going to leave it there. I like it there. All right, let's see if she can hold her submachine gun. And uh, yeah, actually she can. Um, of course, because she has no elbow articulation, she has to hold it at kind of a weird angle, but it does stay in the hand. Uh, now, uh, the walkie-talkie. Will the walkie-talkie fit in the other hand? Let's see. Um, it would be tragic if I were to break the thumb off of this figure just after I pull it out of the package. Uh, it does fit. It fits. Uh, the plastic is a little bit soft. Uh, it allows the thumb to flex a little bit and it will hold the walkie-talkie. This figure will not stand up on its own and you can't put it on a figure stand because it has no holes in the feet. So I'm just going to lean her up against a fun school grunt here so I can say thanks everyone for watching this video. I want to let everybody know there will be a new review this coming weekend, but there will not be a new review the following weekend because I will be at JoeCon in Florida. Uh, so if you can make it out to JoeCon, I'd love to see everybody there. There is some great things planned for this channel. You do not want to miss it. Thank you all for sticking with me, and I'll see you next time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review.